who wants to make 400 horsepower with their 5 liter Ford? I guess technically it's a small block Ford. Here's how. In this video, we're going to take a look at a number of different ways to exceed 400 horsepower from a small block Ford. We've got a 5 liter 302, we've got a stroker version, we've got a 351 Windsor, we have a supercharged 302, and for my boys down in Australia, I even suck in a Boss 302. Stepping up first from the 200 horsepower combinations to the 300 horsepower combinations and now to the 400 horsepower combinations just means that we have to get a little more specific about the components we're choosing to upgrade, especially on a 302 on the smaller displacement. On the 351, it's a little bit easier, obviously, to make that power or any kind of stroker, you know, a 393 or a 408, it's a lot easier, obviously, to make 400 horsepower. But on a 302, we have to, you know, be a little tricky on what we're doing. So here's a perfect example. We have a uh, five liter Explorer short block from the wrecking yard, you know, high mileage deal. We did a lot of testing with it and we we're able to exceed 400 horsepower. And the cool thing is I get to show you a number of different <laughs> components that we tested that allowed us to make that kind of power. But basically it, this was the Explorer short block with trick flow 11R heads on it. And it had the 224, 232 camshaft. It was the TrickFlow Stage 2 cam, so mid-500 lift and then a 224, 232. We also had a dual-plane intake manifold on it and a 650 holly carburetor. But the thing that allowed this actually to make to exceed 400 horsepower was the fact that we did testing with spacers. So we put a open spacer between the carburetor and the intake manifold, despite the fact that it was a dual plane. And that allowed us to make this power level. Now, obviously we had our inch and three quarter headers and everything was tuned properly. This thing ran best with about 35 or 36 degrees of total timing. This thing made 402 horsepower and 370 foot pounds of torque. But let me show you what happened before we put the spacer on to show you how much power the spacer was worth. That's the dual plane by itself. So we were only able to make 394 horsepower. And as you can see, peak torque was not changed, but it, but it happened earlier in the RPM range. 370 foot pounds still, but it was all the way down at 4,200. And instead of carrying it out past 4,500 with the spacer. So the spacer made a, a big difference in power. Now we also tried a four hole spacer when that kind of put it in between these two. But the reason I wanted to try the spacer is because we actually tried a single plane intake, <clears throat> excuse me, all on this as well. We put a funnel web intake, which always performs well, especially on the top end. Here's what happened when we installed the funnel web intake on this combination. As you can see, it made a lot more peak power Peak power is up to 415 horsepower, but take a look at what it did down low. I mean, below, heck, even below 5200 RPM, this thing was down on power. And uh, the crossover point for the, the single plane and the dual plane was <laughs> right at the magic 5252 point. Um, but... Uh, adding the spacer increased that uh, up to 5,500 RPM. So basically the spacer kind of split the difference between the single plane and the dual plane. And in my opinion, the spacer combination probably would be the way that I would go on this particular deal. You give up a little bit at the top, but unless I was running this thing from 5,500 to 7,500 RPM, I think that the dual plane with the spacer would be a good combination and it's over 400 horsepower. Let's get to our next combo. As always, I like to mix these combinations up a little bit and you know, provide a, a little bit of variety because obviously it's easy to make 400 horsepower as we've shown with good heads and enough camshaft and a good intake manifold. And especially with the spacer or the single plane, it's easy to make that kind of power. But I wanted to do something different here. So I was going to show you a supercharged combination that made 400 horsepower. You might be thinking, well, why does a supercharged combination only make 400? And part of that reason is because everything was stock on it. <laughs> it had the stock heads and especially the stock camshaft, both of which hurt power production even under boost. Uh, we had a B&M or a Holley 174 blower. This was a 302 inch motor. And I also ran this thing, which is interesting, ran it with these stock exhaust manifolds um, and a stock, or not a stock, but an H-pipe and kind of a stockish type exhaust because I wanted to see what effect headers had on this combination. So we ran this and the... <laughs> and the other thing that happens is when you um, restrict the exhaust like that and restrict the cam timing the headers 
uh, or the um, heads that the boost is up a lot higher than it is normally. But here's what happened on our uh, our 174 supercharged um, five liter when it was basically stock. It produced 536 horsepower and 426 foot pounds of torque, 427 foot pounds of torque. So what I did was remove the factory exhaust manifolds and that H pipe exhaust. And then we put headers on it and individual mufflers the way that we normally do it. And here's what happened when we changed the exhaust. It picked up a little bit of power and it dropped the boost down a little bit. I'll go ahead and put the boost numbers up here so you, you guys can kind of see where we were at. But the, it, honestly, um, I thought that the exhaust would have more of a change than this. What we did do, and I may cover that in the uh, subsequent videos, but this thing made easily made over 500 horsepower once we put a good set of heads on it. In this case, we put Canfield heads on it and we put uh, a different camshaft in this as well. Obviously, both of which this combination responded to with a blower. But this was another good combination, you know, over 400 horsepower. And it, we got to do some cool testing along the way, which I always like. Let's get to our next combo. Test motor number three, obviously, it's easier to make more power with more displacement. So rather than do a 302 or a 306, we stepped things up to a 347 stroker. So this was a 4030 bore and a 3.4 inch stroke. This came from Coast High Performance. This was a flat top with valve reliefs. And we topped it with, as we'll see here, we got to test a couple of different cylinder heads. This first set was a set of trick flow as cast twisted wedge heads. And then we stepped up, or these are, and these are the fast as cast <laughs> heads. And then we stepped up to a set of CNC heads to find out uh, how much power the extra CNC porting and stuff was worth. We ran this with a dual plane intake manifold and a 750. I want to check that to verify. I think that that's a 750 Holly. Yeah, it was a 750 and a Performer RPM air gap intake manifold, 1.6 roller rockers, inch and three quarter headers. And the camshaft that we ran, it was an XFI uh, cam from Comp Cams. It's a really good cam for a 347. It's a 579 lift at 236, 248 degree duration split and 114 degree lobe separation angle. And it's a healthy cam, obviously much bigger than the 274 Extreme Energy that we normally use, but it works really well on the 347. So equipped in that manner, our 347 produced 459 horsepower and had a good torque curve, 420 foot-pounds of torque. And here's what happened when we stepped up from the fast as cast to the CNC ported trick flow heads. Power picked up even more, 482 horsepower. Peak torque didn't change a lot, but it just picked power up basically from 4,500 to 6,500. 424 foot pounds. So this was a good test where we got to compare the as cast heads and the CNC heads. And in this combination, you might be thinking, well, or you would have to think, is the extra cost of the CNC porting worth this power gain? The gains would be even greater if you had more motor, basically, where the the motor combination could take advantage of the extra airflow offered by the CNC heads. And obviously the fastest cast heads did really well. I mean, they made almost 460. That's a good combination. Let's get to our next one. Back in part two, we covered the effectiveness of a trick flow top end package on the 300 horsepower combinations, changing our stock 5 liter 302 up to a fairly healthy combination. The thing that I like about these types of top, top end packages, which I'm going to apply from Edelbrock on our 351 Windsor, is that it's basically a known quantity. Now, the top end manufacturers put together a package that includes cylinder heads, camshaft, and intake primarily and then they test it and that way you know what you're going to get if you take that combination that they've tested over and over again and you apply it to your combination in this case it's a junk era 351 windsor motor uh, if you apply that combination and put it together and tune it properly it should make the power output that they tell you which is nice because you know the power output going in which is why you're watching these videos to find out what works and what doesn't and so we applied an edelbrock top end package to a junk era 351 windsor it was a later version with the factory hydraulic roller cam. What I did was go to the junkyard, pick one of these up, and then we installed a dual plane intake and a 750 Holley and long tube headers. So we ran the thing stock other than the induction system and it produced 255 horsepower and 352 foot-pounds of torque. So it made almost 100 more foot-pounds than it makes torque. 
it just goes to show you what Ford was trying to do when they designed this motor. Obviously, they weren't concerned about horsepower production. They just wanted that torque so that they could use it as a towing application. But here's what happened when we installed the Edelbrock top end package. You can see we had a big change in power. We produced almost 460 horsepower. Peak torque was up to 435 foot pounds. And what I like is even down here where we started at 3000 RPM, we're already making more torque than the uh, torquey <laughs> factory combination was. And the Edelbrock combination included a number of kind of good parts on it. It had a healthy camshaft, obviously, 573, 582 lift, 235, 239 degree duration split, and 112 degree load separation angle. We also had, it also had the Edelbrock CNC ported 185 heads, which are a good size for this 351 Windsor. But as we showed before in our previous videos on port volume, we could have used something even bigger than that. It had an RPM air gap intake manifold, and we used the same 750 Holly on this combination. This thing also had 1.6 roller rockers. This is a good combination. I like the fact that it made a lot of power from basically a junkyard motor and the fact that we didn't lose any power down low compared to the factory cam. Always a good choice. Let's get to our next combo. This is another example of basically equipping a 302 or a 5 liter size motor with um, good cylinder heads, good camshaft, and good intake. So you might think about it as a top end package. The reality is that this particular top end package came right from the factory back in 1970 on a Boss 302. And this is a shout out for all the guys down in Australia because I know that you guys love the Boss stuff and I do too. This was one of my favorite motors that I got to produce. I did a reproduction of a factory Boss 302 to demonstrate how much all of these original motors make. And that video is already up. You can check it out. But I'll show you how we got this thing to make 400 horsepower instead of the 300 and 72 or 3 horsepower that it made in stock trim. We ran this with the stock 1970 Boss heads with a uh, an original Boss 302 intake, which by the way are very hard to come by. And that was on loan from the guys at home at Moody. So thanks to the guys there for loaning me the intake because there's no way I could afford that kind of stuff. Those things are, uh, are, are quite expensive. So we put together a 302 short block with a Boss piston in it. We put a reproduction of the Boss 302 camshaft in it and ran it with the factory intake and factory cylinder heads and inch and seven eighths long tube headers. Run in this manner, our little Boss 302 produced 373 horsepower and 324 foot pounds of torque. As you can see, this thing had a very nice torque curve. Remember, the, the Boss heads are way too big for a 302, but this thing made good torque. It, it actually made as much torque as the DZ302 with the smaller fuelie heads. So this combination actually worked very well. But here's how we got it to come up from the 300 horsepower level to the 400 horsepower level is that we installed a, another camshaft in it from Comp Cams. And that's all that was required to make the turn the boss into a 400 horsepower motor and this was a comp a comp 282s solid flat tap of camshaft it was their magnum series it was 528 lift 236 degrees of duration at 50 and 110 degree lobe separation angle it was a single pattern cam but you can see it had a sizable effect on the power output and it's not surprising that a more modern cam even though that magnum cam is probably fairly old relatively speaking but not as old as the design on the on the factory boss 302 so this cam chef had a big effect on power production we made over 400 horsepower from the boss we are up at 405 horsepower, peak torque checked in at 342 foot-pounds. And the thing that I like about this combination and, and why the Boss works so well and why it was an impressive performer is if we take a look at the usable RPM range, I mean, this thing made peak torque down here at 3,900 RPM, but it made peak power, peak horsepower at 7,000 RPM. So <laughs> that's a 3,000 RPM power band. It's a pretty impressive power band. And it's obviously not done uh, making power there, although we ran it out farther than that. We ran out the 72 or 7,300. It, it, it is kind of rolling over there. It's not a really wild camshaft. 
but you could certainly rev it higher than that. But it's impressive that it made peak torque that low and peak power that high. Good combination. Really like those Boss motors. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay, guys, as we can see, there are a number of different ways to exceed 400 horsepower out of a 5 liter or small block Ford. Lots of different combinations. We can do lots of different things with a 302 or a 5 liter Ford. We can also do stuff with stroker versions like the 347 or even step up to a 351 Windsor or any kind of stroker variant of that 351 Windsor. Obviously, boosts make things a lot easier, but just having good cylinder heads, camshaft, and intake, like we did with the Boss 302, also works. I'm Richard Holder. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. 500 horsepower stuff coming up next.